test an exam or, or say, was to hold asleep or something like that. Uh, let's pop into continuum for a minute. Uh, so this was a, a shareware game, uh, except it was it was not um, distributed as shareware. It was distributed as beerware. Because the guys who made it, they thought shareware was a joke. They had uh, they had signed a deal to get it published commercially, but that that fell through. And then they thought, well, let's release it anyway. We've put so much effort into this thing, but we don't think we're going to make any money. So let's ask people if you like it. Send us some beer. And uh, it, it turned out that a whole lot of people did actually send them beer. And most of it either got confiscated by the postal department because you're not allowed to send alcohol through the mail, apparently. Uh, or it was destroyed in the process of shipping it because it wasn't packed correctly. And so the poor guys would open the box and there would just be a spilled beer everywhere. But they, in the end, they got about $5,000 worth of beer. So <laughs> maybe shareware d does work after all, or maybe just a whole lot of people thought it was funny that they asked for beer. So Randy Wilson, uh, as you see, Stanford email address, he just just started uh, doing a, a degree at Stanford, I think, in uh, computer science. He was amazed at how popular the game turned out to be. Uh, it got talked about a lot on um, message boards online. Um, now, I cannot remember how to play. I need to look up the instructions. Option, command, space, slash. All right, let's see how we go. So the idea is uh, gravity. So they had originally called this game Gravity Well. And they have uh, different gravity for different planets. Almost got hit. And they put an, an enormous amount of effort into making sure that collision detection was as accurate as possible. So they would draw. The, oh shit! They would draw the ship uh, only after they had done all the all the collision detections. And they, the collision detection algorithm would, uh, yeah, would be based on Shit. I'm dead. Uh, if there's something uh, black, if there's a black pixel underneath the ship, so if there's a bullet underneath the ship and it has to be a specific um, pixel, they had it down to the exact pixel, then your ship would get destroyed. Some of these walls are, are bouncy, some of them are not. You see gravity is pulling me in different directions. So on this planet I'm being pulled to the left. This is a, a, a fantastic game. Uh, I like it a lot, but it's also really difficult. And uh, most people uh, struggled to get through all the levels. You could also make your own levels. Uh, 
process for doing that was uh, kind of uh, just like drawing some di drawing some really simple two D diagrams. This is something that I I was very pleased to discover when I was working on the book. I, I'd never heard of it until I started researching, and I think actually the person who put me onto it was, of all people, John Romero, the one of the co-creators of, of Doom. So I, I'd emailed him to let him know if about my book because he actually did the Apple 2GS ports of a couple of Mac games. So I thought he might be interested. And he said that he he hopes that, that I'm able to, to cover this game because he loved it. And so I went and looked it up and, and I thought it sounded fantastic. So I got in touch with Randy and, and his brother Brian and heard about all about how it was made and I looked on looked online and I found that it was quite popular on Usenet. Uh, one of the funnest stories I heard from, from Randy was that, damn, that they, they got contacted by a guy in Japan who wanted to send them a really expensive bottle of sake uh, and would not uh, despite Randy's request to, to just send money and tell them what to buy would not do that said the the one that he wanted to give them was only in avail only available in Japan and so he packed it incredibly well thankfully it didn't get snitched by by customs and he gave very specific instructions about how to drink it, what temperature to, to heat it up to. audio from this game, uh, they had no idea how to do sound. So they just kind of put random numbers into the sound buffer, hoping that they'd come up with something good. And through trial and error, they ended up with all these different sound effects. So I didn't get very far into it just then. But if you... If you jump forward a ways, things get tougher. <laughs> Still getting my hand back on the keyboard. I mean, that's pretty cruel design, having having a cannon shooting right at where you appear in the level. forget how many planets there are, um, but I remember it's a lot. There we go, 60. Let's go to the last one. So I'm being pulled down, and I've got to somehow go through the, some of those corridors. Let's loop around here. It, it, it. So you can see, if you manage to get inside, there's actually quite a lot of space on this level. But getting inside is not so easy. Right. 
thought maybe I could shoot down that corridor as I was passing, but no. Nah. And so that Brian with the high score, I think that's Brian Wilson. Uh, this version I downloaded from uh, his website. Avoid the walls, kill things. <laughs> Don't always do things the obvious way is a pretty interesting tip. Let's see what the demo play is like. Okay, <laughs> that was interesting. So people could create galaxies, and I happen to have one here that I downloaded from somewhere. So let's have a quick look at that. Gravity is pretty strong. And what is that? Oh, it's gone now. So this was originally developed in, in 1984. Uh, although, I think, what was it, 1987 it says they released it? Um, and that's pretty much entirely down to the publisher. Um, it was a Roadrun game. Uh, they put out a Commodore 64 version, I think. I forget. They put it on a, an 8 bit computer, but they didn't do it with the same level of care. And so the Wilson brothers were very upset that when they played this, other version of their game, they'd see a bullet that clearly did not hit their ship, but it killed them because the collision detection was was doing it based on where the ship might be next, not where the ship is right now. Oh. That was not a bouncy wall. So that's that, and now um, I looked at that, didn't I? Yeah. There was a, a patch released at one point uh, to make sure it could continue to work. This is what people had to go through in the early days of the Mac to play some games. They had to to really go through some crazy workarounds to, to get shareware games in particular to, to work properly. If you don't do exactly what you need to do on certain Macs, your Mac will crash and you could have damage to the data that you have on there. Much safer just to turn off the RAM cache. If you have easy access and you fire five times, you might accidentally turn on sticky keys. <laughs> Unless you'd like an extra challenge. And there it is, Planet Editor. So this is how you, you made your levels. You had this editor. So again, you got something clearly inspired by Mac Taint. 
And so you can drag and drop things. You can tap that, here are different types of objects. Don't know what that is. So you've got the different types of walls. B is a bouncing wall, uh, P is not. So if you hit a bouncing wall, you'll just bounce right off it. If you hit a different kind of wall, you'll die. So that's the gravity thing. Set the width, the height, firing rate, point at bonus. Specify what direction the gravity is pushing you. You can have it set to wrap around. Uh, P is pass through. Okay. Yeah, and then that's the regular wall. So that uh, editor was, was very popular. Uh, there were a lot of uh, custom galaxies shared around. Uh, most of them, sadly, are, are long lost. Uh, unless people hap someone happens to have a a whole cache of them hidden somewhere on a hard drive or a floppy disk. Um, but I could only find uh, that one Lee's galaxy. Uh, I think I, I saw references to a whole bunch of others. Okay, Mac Adventure game, sure.